Hey guys, it's Sean. Welcome to Sean Vibes. If this is your first time on my channel, I'm so excited to see you. If you have been here before, oh my God, I'm so grateful to have you. So you guys, I love to use the tarot to help you discover or uncover or um, remember the possibilities for your life. Sometimes life makes it so that we forget that we are capable of doing so much, right? We have blind spots because of experiences that we've had. So I use my tarot readings to help you connect with those possibilities so that you have so much more fun in your life than you would if you don't believe in possibilities. For today's reading, we are going to be doing a pick a card. I have not set out the cards for you to choose from yet. Um, but the the uh, topic <laughs> of our pick a card today is what should you do to treat yourself or what should you do for self-care that would make you feel amazing right now? OK, so what treat or self-care would make you feel amazing right now? Feeling good is what our reading today is all about. So I have here in my hand one of my favorite uh, decks. And it's the Believe in Your Own Magic Oracle. And so uh, I'm going to choose or I'm going to select a couple of three, actually, three cards to be your guides to lead you into your reading. So there will be three total. Okay. So I don't know which cards we are getting. I wanted you to experience the setting of those cards with me. So where should I put these? I didn't think that one through. I have a new setup, which I'm super excited about. But at the same time, I have just a little bit less space to work with than I used to. So it's, uh, you know, well, it is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. Okay, so um, we have pile one pile two and pile three. Now, if you are someone who likes to pick with crystals, I have set those out for you, as you can see. So pile one, your crystal is the Howlite Heart. Pile two, your crystal is Ocean Jasper. Ah, it makes me want to go to the water. And pile three, your crystal is this massive rose quartz that I... <laughs> recently bought i got this like a week ago Oh, a week ago today actually i saw it and fell in love with it right away don't let that bias you use your intuition to determine which of these three cards you are most drawn to and then what you're going to do is you're going to go down below this video and you're going to find the time stamps for each reading in the description box if you click on that timestamp, then you will uh, be taken directly to your reading. Now, I'm saying it and saying it so simplistically, just in case you're someone who has not done a pick a card reading before. But for those of you who are old hat, y'all know what to do and have probably already clicked away from me and done it. I'm going to be silent now and give you a moment to choose your card. I'll see you in your reading. Hi, Pile One. Before we get started, I just wanted to let you know that I write blessings every, well, whenever it crosses my mind. And if you would like to receive from me a free blessing as a downloaded, a downloadable, beautifully designed image, JPEG or PNG for free, all you have to do is fill out the form that you'll find in the link below the description. Those are lots of words. What I'm trying to say is, hey, yo, scroll down and there's a link. And if you fill out the Google form it takes you to, I will send you a free downloadable, beautifully designed, original blessing that's yours to keep. OK, so <laughs> you know what? I think I'm going to just cut that and put that at the top of every reading instead of trying to say it again every time. Um, you guys, hi, welcome to your reading. So for your tarot um, reading today we are going to be using the dreamy moons tarot deck i love this deck it's so beautiful i don't read with it very often um but we are using it today because it's got this 
lavish feel, this luxurious feel. And we are focusing today on what treat or self-care would make you feel amazing right now. Now, you guys were drawn into your reading by the How Light Heart and the very first Oracle card that was in our row. We're going to reveal it now. Let's see. So it says sword. And then it says make the change. Make sure you can see that. Can you guys see that? Make the change. Now, uh, the first hit that I get with this card is it might make you feel really good to shake things up when it comes to your appearance. Have you been sporting the same look for like decades or if you're super young uh, for years or maybe even months, you know? Is it possible that you have a look that's not even yours? It's what you were um, told by probably a mother, maybe someone else in your family, maybe a school teacher at some point in your life that that was the right thing for you. Or maybe you've got a very fashion forward friend or a fashion conscious friend or someone who's like a fashionista. She comes off like she knows everything about fashion and beauty. And she told you what she thought your style was. And you've been wearing that style for a while, but now you are wanting something different. The feeling that I'm getting is you're wanting something that's more reflective of who you are, right? Even if it's not that someone else influenced your choice of um, external appearance, but even if it was a, a style that you chose for yourself in the past, but maybe you've grown, you've changed, something is different about you um, psychologically. And because of being, or, or emotionally, right? Uh, because we're always going, growing, we're always changing. So if something is different about you internally, what used to work for us externally sometimes doesn't fit anymore. And we look in the mirror and we don't feel like ourselves to ourselves anymore. I had that happen with me. When I was in my 20s, 150,000 years ago, I used to wear um, white a lot because as you can imagine, white is really good on my skin tone, you know? But as I got older and um, just changed, things about my personality changed, I found that when I would go to the store and I would try on something that was just pure white, like a, a, a stark white, snow white, it didn't, it didn't feel right. It didn't look, to me, it just, it didn't look good. And then I realized it's because it didn't feel right. Um, there was just something different about my psyche or about my aura, about how I was, I was moving through the world that I found creams. If I wanted to be in the white family, that sounds odd, but you know what I mean, the <laughs> white palette. Um, I found that the, the creams served me better. And then in general, you know, I, I found that I was actually more drawn to like poppy colors, like pinks and reds and yellows. Um, whereas when I was much younger, I used to love blues. And now I can't stand the sight of blue on me. I've got the same skin I've always had, but I just, it feels different than it used to. And you might be going through something similar, right? Um, there may have been a a change in your life that changes how you view life, including yourself. Um, so for some of you, it might be about, you know, the ex external appearance as far as clothes go. But for some of you, it might be external appearance as far as your own self goes, your own body. Uh, you might be inspired right now to change your hair color, to get a haircut. You see here in this picture, she's cutting her hair uh, with a sword. Don't do that. Um, <laughs> there's um, so many, so many ways that we can change our external appearance, right? Oh, working out more. Or if you're someone who's been like super gung-ho about working out and you're like super shredded, but it doesn't feel like you 
your external is not matching your internal. It might be that you want to work out less or change the kind of work that you're doing. Uh, for some of us, you know, certain kinds of workouts define, well, not for some of us, for all of us, certain sorts of workouts define certain parts of the body. And we might be like, well, no, that's actually not what I was meaning to do. I'd rather look like this kind of fit over here than that kind of fit over there. So, so again, right off the bat, what I'm getting with this card for you guys and make the change is allowing yourself, giving yourself permission to change your external look, to change your style, to change your hair color, to do something different with your makeup. If you're someone who doesn't wear makeup and you, you know, would like to start exploring that, do it. I didn't start wearing makeup until 2022. Yeah, last year. Last year is when I first started doing makeup, when I uh, started the podcast, Not So Average. And I was putting myself on camera, you know, once a week, I was like, I got to learn how to do makeup. And so I did. Um, before that, I only wore makeup if I was on stage or if I was in front of the camera because someone had hired me to do something. But just in my day to day, never wore makeup. So if you're someone who hasn't worn makeup before and you feel like you, you know, you want to start enhancing certain features um, or hiding certain things that you think makeup can help you, you know, just cover up a little something, something, do that. Maybe change the kind of makeup. If you're someone who's been wearing makeup for a while and you've been doing something that's more low key, maybe right now you're feeling like you want to do something more dramatic, more poppy, right? Or the opposite. So yeah, I'm getting the sense here around external change and um, giving yourself permission to do that. And the important thing here, you, you guys, is noting that it's your change to make. So you can make that change to whatever you want it to be. And if it turns out you don't like that change, you, you can undo it. <laughs> you can go back to what was before. But I'm getting here, you know, experiment experiment explore see how it feels see how you like it let's try that all right so your cards as always in my um this is really close to the microphone it's gonna be super loud should i shovel it up here no anyway um <laughs> you guys uh the cards have already been pre-shuffled i shuffle them before i start the camera every time but i do tend to do this because it does help me focus the intention so i'm just going to pull a couple cards for you really quickly to see what else comes up from the tarot in regards to make the change make the change making the change is going to make you feel amazing right now and again i feel i feel very compelled very called to say this is not about superficiality it's about what's gonna make you feel good right now. And if you were drawn to this pile, making some sort of a change to your physical appearance is, you know, maybe you've been thinking about it, maybe it's been niggling in the back of your head, or maybe you hadn't thought about it and you heard me say it and you're like, ah, oh, yes, that's exactly what I need. Um, but I also feel compelled to say that some people who may have already been over-focused on their external appearance, that this card for you make the change may be may very very well be about putting less focus on that and letting your natural self come out more um particularly if you're someone who goes like really hard on the workouts and maybe it's draining you maybe it's tiring out your body maybe it's just you know the law of diminishing returns is when we put a lot of effort into something and we start to notice that the amount of payoff that we get from that effort is dwindling over time. We've maxed out um, what can be gotten from that. So I'm getting that for some of you that there, there may be that, not a whole lot of you, that might actually be specific for one specific person or a couple of specific people. Uh, for most of you, I'm getting that it's, it's you know, wanting to change things up and, and add some excitement to your life in the sense that when you go and look in the mirror again, you're you're going to see something different than what you've been seeing recently. And it's going to like, it's going to excite you. It's like meeting a new friend and that friend is you. And how much better can that get? Okay. So mm. Oh, okay. Right away. We got nine of stars. What treat or self care can group one do? That will make them feel amazing right now. Nine of stars. So stars in this deck is what's pentacles in a traditional tarot pack. 
And pentacles, right? Sorry, nine of pentacles is independence, right? It's independence. It's contentment. And I'm getting the sense here that there's some self-satisfaction, self self-contentment is part of it. We also have Hierophant. Hierophant. So that's one of our major arcana. What? Yeah, so what I'm getting with that, you guys, is learn, you know, learn about this change. I'm getting that for some of you, it, it, it is really like a focus shift. You may have been that person that historically has not cared about your appearance. And I'm not saying that you went around looking all slovenly and stuff. I'm just saying that something is, oh, it could be a crush. For somebody, you know, for some of you, it could be that you have a new crush and you want to stand out to that person. For some of you, it's just you have a new lease on life. Uh, maybe you've been ill and now your health has returned to you and you want to sparkle and glow in every bit of yourself. Um, or it could be something like what I said happened with me last year. You know, I had something that shifted in my daily behaviors that... Um, inspired me to learn how to do makeup so with us getting nine of uh, nine of stars here as well as hierophant what i'm getting for you is the sense that you know don't feel like making this sort of change don't let it be daunting don't let it be overwhelming or frightening for you um it, 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 and don't let money keep you from doing it diy this shit y'all okay so um learn with Hairfin, I'm getting learn. Le I had to learn how to do the makeup. And no, I didn't like pay somebody hundreds of dollars to teach me how to put lipstick on. Lip gloss, I don't really like lipstick very much. Um, no, no, no. I YouTubed it. I'm a big, big proponent of learning on YouTube. <laughs> so I YouTubed um, the information that I, I wanted to learn. And you can do the same. It may not, and you might be like, oh yeah, oh yeah. Because maybe you already have the habit of going to YouTube to learn something that, um, you, you know, something for your job or how to do something with your computer, how to use a new program. But it never occurred to you to use YouTube to learn um, different looks. Oh my God. Like all these lifestyle, I think they're called lifestyle vloggers. Don't quote me on that. Um, but a lot of these girls, and guys, I suppose, too, who have these kinds of channels, they will do a haul, right? And the haul is when they've gone out and gone shopping and um, or maybe sometimes it's been sent to them by like a sponsor, but they've got a ton of um, new items. And a lot of times this is in the, in the fashion space, right? So there are ways for you to find out online, to learn online what looks might work for you, whether it's about makeup, whether it's about hair, whether it's about hair pieces, whether it's about um, uh, style, uh, shoes, all of that stuff. So I'm definitely getting, you know, with nine of stars and the sense around self-contentment as well as the hierophant, I'm getting allow yourself to learn how to do these things for yourself. Some of you may be adventurous enough to uh, consider learning how <laughs> learning how to cut your own hair, dye your own hair, find out which hair dyes. If this is something you're interested in, do a quick Google search and find out which hair dyes um, are healthiest for the hair so you don't do damage to your hair and allow yourself to do it yourself. Uh, that's redundant, right? Allow yourself to do it. There we go. Okay. Um, let's see. Is there anything else coming up for group one? What treat or self-care will make them feel amazing right now? And I'm getting that part of what will make you feel amazing and going this route is not just the change that is going to ultimately result from this, but the experience of the learning, right? There might be, uh, in this group, there might be people who really, really enjoy getting new information. Like I'm one of those people. I love learning new things. You know, Hierophant is actually one of my life path cards in the tarot. Uh, my two cards are Temperance and Hierophant. And Temperance is card number 14, which reduces to five and five is Hierophant's number. And um, every time I would hear people talking about it, about five, you know, uh, being your card, your, your life path card in the tarot, they always, always, always focus on teaching. 
right? Traditional learning, teaching, religion, and none of that shit resonated for me. Like none of that was like, yes. And I've been a teacher. In the past, I was a teacher. I was a teacher because I was told to be. And I didn't love it. I did not love it. But you know what I have always loved doing is learning. And so while Hierophant uh, definitely has the teacher or teaching attribution, it is a card of learning. And if you look at the traditional Hierophant card, it's got... um, It's got the guy sitting up on his, I mean, it's essentially like a throne, but he's not a king. He's sitting there and he's talking to people. The Hierophant is not the only person in that card. There are two people learning from him in that card. And so, you know, once I had that aha moment for myself recently, it's it's completely changed how I interpret this card when I read the tarot, right? And I feel definitely in this particular instance, Hierophant here is in regards to your love of learning or that even if you don't know that you have a love of learning yet, that it is going to prove to be super exciting for you to learn these new skills, these new techniques. Uh, and partially because of the fact that it is going to make you feel so empowered. Um, I'm definitely getting a sense around empowerment for you here this is a power the empowerment that is going to come from this is going to be what makes you feel amazing it's not just about the external change shoot i would even say it's probably not even about the external change at all but about feeling like you were able to do something about this area that means uh, about mm, let me say it better that you were able to do something Yeah, yeah, that you were able to do something about this area. You wanted to and you didn't let anything stop you. You you were like, okay, how do I, you know, how do I do this? And you figured it out and you did it. Now, if you don't want to learn, that's fine too. If you just want to go get the haircut, if you got the um, money to drop, go do it. (laughs) <laughs> absolutely do it but definitely i'm getting a you know a sense that this change is going to be exciting for you and that's what's going to make you feel amazing i feel for a lot of you for the majority of you that it's going to be the, the learning how to to do this for yourself uh, because like let's say you had the tendency the history of feeling like well i'm not one of those kinds of girls or i'm not one of those kinds of guys i'm not one of those people you know i can't i We have these different, you know, social types, particularly, um, you know, that get attributed to us in like, God, maybe even as early as elementary school nowadays, but definitely by junior high school, middle school. And so there's like the cute girls and you might be someone who's perfectly lovely genetically, you know, perfectly lovely uh, physically in the, the way you're made, but you didn't connect with the pretty girls. And so because you didn't connect with the pretty girls, you develop an identity of not being one of the pretty people, you know, whether it's girls or guys, whatever you are, whoever you are. Um, Or you might be someone who's not traditionally beautiful or not traditionally handsome. Uh, You might have a little bit of quirk to your look, right? Quirk is in now, right? Quirk is in now. But um And so because of that, there may have been things that were said to you that were unlovely, that were mean, that were hurtful. And so because of that, you, again, don't think of yourself as attractive. But our our attractiveness usually comes from the energy that we're emanating because you can be physically beautiful and not be attractive at all, right? I mean, I have once a month, I'm that person. Doesn't matter what I do with the external. The yuck that comes out of me once a month. Come on, y'all. That ain't pretty. Um, but anyway, so so you could be whatever it is. It could be that whatever the cause is that has made it could be that you had something happen in your life that changed how you saw yourself. Or maybe you became a mom and so your focus became other people, and so you don't see yourself as a whatever the thing is. The identification of yourself as attractive not being there doesn't have to stay that way with this ability to look into how to make some of these external changes that's going to empower you that's going to make you feel really really good um i keep i keep saying that i'm going to pull another card but i just keep getting these intuitive hits for you guys around this so one last card for group one is there anything else 
that we can say here to group one around what treat or self-care is going to make them feel amazing. Ace of stars, ace of stars. So again, ace of pentacles is what this would be in a traditional tarot deck. Okay. And that, you guys, is 100% confirmation and all the proof we need for everything I literally just said to you in that last piece of yum, 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 yum that I did. The confidence that is going to overflow out of you, to you, for you, is what is going to make you feel amazing. You are going to feel loved because you will have done something so self-loving, self-empowering. And that love that is going to be bubbling out of you bubbling out of you because of this choice and you know again it could be that you learn about it and do it yourself or it could be that you pay somebody to do it for you but you are empowering yourself to make a change um a positive change instead of just feeling like oh my god oh my god and then the people who know you they're gonna like double take look at you different and that's gonna give you a jolt too right and that's you'll sit up a little taller you'll smile a little bigger all of that stuff that's all part of it, man. So yeah, full of love. So much love is going to be overflowing out of you, out of you to you. And that cyclical energy of that love just coming like that, that, that love energy just swirling all around you. Others will see it and they will be drawn to it. They will be attracted to it. I ain't lying. I don't lie. I don't know how to lie. I don't think I know how to lie. Am I lying right now? Maybe. I don't think so. Anyway, okay, you guys, that's what I've got for you right now. Group one, enjoy this. If you do decide to make some sort of change to your appearance, tell me what it is. Come back to this video and write it down there in the comments. I am super interested to know which direction you go in. All right, guys, I'll see you in my next one. Bye. Hi, group two. Welcome to your reading. So um, <laughs> I just realized my chair, you know that sound? You know what sound I'm talking about. My chair just did that. I hope y'all didn't hear it, but now I've brought it up. So don't rewind the video just to listen to it. Anyway, welcome to your reading. Uh, before I get started, I want to tell you guys something. So I write blessings. I write blessings um, whenever it crosses my mind. And I want to share those blessings with you, one of those blessings with you. So if you are interested in receiving from me a, an original blessing that is a downloadable JPEG or PNG image that you can put anywhere you want, you can use it as your wallpaper on your computer, free of charge. All you have to do is scroll down to the description box of this video. You will see a link there that'll take you to a Google form. If you fill that out, I will send you a free copy of one of my blessings. All right, that being said, I hope I didn't forget anything. Let's start with your reading. So you guys of group two were drawn into your reading today by the second card, as well as the ocean jasper. What a beautiful stone this is. When I first saw this stone, it wasn't a pay week. <laughs> so I didn't buy it right away and I was like you know maybe it'll still be there next week and I can go back and get it and it was and I did and here it is and it is the stone that your intuition uh, connected with and brought you to your reading today so let's discover together what card which oracle card you got from the believe in your own magic oracle deck it is remember to practice self-love so in case you skip the intro, our topic today is what treat or self-care would make you feel amazing right now. And the card that you got is remember to practice self-love. Now I am going to pull from the tarot for you guys and we're going to be using my Dreamy Moons tarot deck. This is a deck that I don't use very often uh, for the readings here on YouTube. Um, I don't actually use it very often in my in the personal readings I do for people either. Every once in a while I'll get a hit when it's like a special occasion kind of reading. And this today felt like that because today our focus is on making you feel amazing. And this is a very luxurious deck and that's why it felt to me like it was the right one for your reading today. So I will be pulling tarot for you from that in just a second. But before I do that, I am feeling... 
here that um, with this oracle card that you got, remember to practice self-love. Some of you who chose this pile today, you've been very hard on yourself lately. I'm getting that for some of you, it could be a lifelong habit. That it's how, how you were taught to treat yourself because the people who raised you were very hard on you. I'm getting something around not, not necessarily having a sense of one's self, sense of yourself. Perhaps others have defined you most of your life. Even if it's not the case that you were defined by others, I'm definitely getting here that your reflection, the true you, the real you, has been missing for a while. And like I said a second ago, for some of you, it may be your entire life. Uh, the real you hasn't been there. Or you've kept it hidden. Maybe you are aware of the real you, those things that make you you, and you only allow yourself to be in touch with those parts of yourself when you're alone. But I'm getting for the majority of the people who pick this pile, it's not that. That there's a hiding, there's been a hiding uh, for fear of judgment, trying to avoid criticism. So we can hear that a lot, right? this idea of fear of judgment. That's it's kind of a basic thing to say at this point, right? But, um, but what I'm getting here is not just fear of judgment in the general sense, but like an abject terror of being criticized to the point of making almost every decision, if not every decision from with, with, the in intention of avoiding criticism. So it's like you hear the criticism in your head as you are making the choice or prepping for whatever the thing is. Let me see if I can say that better. An anticipation of specific criticisms around certain things, whatever the thing is. And so what I'm getting for you here in terms of the treat that will, or and this one is actually treat slash self-care. It's not one or the other. My cat is like staring at me. <laughs> he wants my attention so bad. Um, he like hates when I work. He thinks it's my job to just sit on the bed and let him sit on my lap. But anyway, sorry guys. Um, it was just distracting me how he was staring at me so hard. So um, I'm getting here, you guys, that the treat, and it's a treat for many of you who chose this pile today, is to let yourself out. Let your real self out. Accept what is in there, warts and all. It doesn't matter how bad you may think it is right now, what is being called for for you is to see it, to say it, so identify what that thing is and to let it live. Stop shutting it down. Stop shutting it in a box. Stop ignoring it. Act like The same way I couldn't ignore my cat just now, like, cause it was sitting there staring at me. There are aspects of you that are, that are intensely trying to get your attention in the same way that Casper was just trying to get mine. And so don't do what I just did. I just, I was like, dude, sorry, can't help you. Your guidance right now today is actually the opposite of that. Your guidance right now today is to see that piece of you. It could be something about how you look. It could be something about your preference in music. You know, it could be something about um, things you like to do for fun. So anything, 
where you have felt it is not okay to be you, whether that judgment around that has come from someone else in the past or many people in the past say it was something that you got picked on for in high school or, or elementary school, or it's just something that you just made up in your own mind you decided wasn't okay. And so you've locked it away or you act like it's not there. And the treat for you is the freedom to be oneself, the freedom to be yourself, holy, holy, not holy, like, but like, <laughs> completely. I could have just said that, right? Anyway, um, that's what I'm getting for you guys before having pulled any cards whatsoever. So I'm gonna share a story with you really quickly. When I was 27, I won't say how many years ago that was, uh, there was, I, I was living in Charlotte, North Carolina at the time, which is uh, technically, I guess, at this point, my hometown. It's not where I was raised, but my family has now been there longer than they were uh, where I initially grew up. When I was 27 years old, I was living in, in Charlotte, and um, I can't remember specifically what happened to trigger this, but there were two stores in our city that I really loved. I frequented these stores often. One was called Central Sun and the other was called Rainbow Path. And as you can possibly guess from their names, these are stores that uh, sold metaphysical supplies. So books, crystals, candles, all the things. And this was way before I read Tara. Um, I did used to buy Oracle cards there though. I, uh, I will say I did used to do that. I was raised Catholic, so I was probably afraid to touch tarot at the time. But anyway, so on my 27th birthday, or right before my 27th birthday, I went to, I can't, I think it was Rainbow Path that I went to for this particular thing. It might have been both. And I bought for myself all of the things that I wanted within the budget that I had at the time to give to myself for my birthday. I threw myself a birthday celebration by buying myself things that I wanted for myself that I had for whatever reason not allowed myself to get before. It and I you know that was so long ago at this point I can't remember what the reason was. It could have been budgetary. It could have been um you know what will my mom say or something like that because I was at 27 still living with her. I was an artist, okay? You know, artists don't we don't tend to be flush with cash. So <laughs> so um I don't, I don't know what it was, or maybe it just didn't occur to me. It, you know, it's highly likely that it just didn't even occur to me to, to get a bunch of stuff. Like I would go and I would get a thing here or there occasionally. But for this particular birthday, I got several items that I wanted for myself and I bought a uh, gift wrapping paper and I wrapped those things. And, you know, instead of like the bows, oh no, wait, maybe those are the bows. Okay, you know the ones that are kind of stringy, you know, and you tie them up and stuff. Um, yeah. And then I placed them all on the kitchen counter, oh, sorry, the kitchen table, the di not, yeah, the dinette, the kitchen table um, the night before. So that when I woke up in the morning on my birthday, there would be for me a pile of treats and every single one of those things was something that I wanted for myself and that no one else had weighed in on. And that was the beginning of my self-actualization because I grew up in a family where self-actualization just wasn't a thing. It just wasn't a thing. Um, lots of people have that as their reality, right? Particularly like my generation and older. Um, but Every single one of, no one weighed in on it. I didn't have to consider what anybody else thought. Um, you know, sometimes like when we like say it's your birthday and they go, well, you pick where we go because it's your birthday. You get to pick dinner. Yay. And what do you freaking do? And, um, <laughs> and you can't help but choose. Sometimes you consider who's going to be in that having dinner with you and you try to find something that works for both of you, you know, or for all of you. So um, I want to share that with you guys because there was for me for the first time in my life, 110% self-acceptance, 110% doing something solely based on what was me, what was right for me, what was desired by me. 
And that's the treat part. And that's, I sound so preachy right now. Mm, I didn't mean to. But anyway, that's the treat part, right? So <laughs> that's what makes it a treat for you. And that's, and what will make it amazing is the freedom. You will have such a sense of freedom doing this. So again, it could be something that you've wanted to try, but you didn't think you had the right to try or didn't have the time to try. It may not even be about self-worth issues, about having the right. It could just be you just haven't had the time. So right now, make the time. Self-love yourself. Redundant. But that is the treat that is going to make you feel amazing right now. And, you know, the parts of you that have been shut off, the parts of you that haven't even been allowed to show themselves, the parts of you that you have not explored. So for some of you, and I hope we get hermit card today, I really do, because for some of you, this is going to be about being alone for a little bit. It is not something that most of us naturally do spend time alone. A lot of times we think there's something wrong with us if we're not around people or we don't know what to do with ourselves if we're not with other people. And then there's also the part that's just the healthy truth of humans, which is that we're social creatures by nature. And you may have been someone who never learned how to be by yourself. If you're a second, third, fourth born in your family, you may have never had your family home to yourself. You know, And so the idea of spending time alone is not one that even crosses your mind, let alone that you dismiss. So that became a part of my, my habitual way of life after treating myself to those things on that 27th birthday is time to myself to discover myself. And I can't say that it was intentional, but it was deliberate. And it did make such a difference in what came after. And so I feel that for many of you, that is called for as part of this treat. Allow yourself the time alone. Allow yourself the time because if you know, you may not know what things might make you happy or what things might excite you or what things you might be curious about or want to explore, what things you might love. And so having that time to just focus on you without interference from anybody else wanting to sit in your lap or asking you what's for dinner or whatever the thing is, you know, demanding that report on his desk by nine. I don't, I don't know. I just, I just jumped in time to 1985. I don't know what the hell that was. Anyway, <laughs> so let's see what the tarot has to say about this for you. Oh, okay. So right away we got seven of stars in this deck, you guys. Yeah. Oh, Mm, I felt that in my stomach. In this particular depiction of uh, that card, she's, she's tending to the garden. So I'm, I'm getting here for you more of that message to tend to yourself. Tend to yourself. And that doesn't have to just be healing. In fact, I feel, I feel that several of you in this group have probably spent a lot of time healing and, and being in that healing space in that healing energy and on that healing journey, you might be feeling a little beat up. So, you know, I'm going to, I want to talk really quickly about a couple of, there's three goddesses that if you are interested at all in learning about female deities, you might want to explore. One is Katesh. Sometimes she's written as Kadesh, same goddess, Egyptian. Um, she is the goddess of sexual pleasure. I didn't mean to start there, but there it is. Okay. <laughs> the goddess of sexual pleasure. So let yourself, you know, explore. What do you like? What would you like to try? What have you not had a chance to try yet? Who would you like to try? Okay. I did. I did that. I did that. Good thing I'm not monetized yet. I don't know. Maybe they'll shut me down. I don't know. I'm probably not that important to YouTube, but anyway, um, <laughs> See, Catholic upbringing. You see, I just kind of like devolved, right? Anyhow, um, the second goddess that I want to bring to your attention is Tanit. She is also the goddess of pleasure, more along the lines of fun in general, but not just like fun, like, oh yeah, I want to go play some tennis, but like grown up fun that's not necessarily tied to sexuality. Okay. So, um, Tanit, 
T-A-N-I-T. I I believe she is also Egyptian, but don't quote me on that. She is definitely, oh, you know what? I can look it up really quickly. I have my book here. It's the African Goddess Rising. Oh God, what was her page? Uh, Because this book doesn't have them. Oh, here she is. Okay. Yeah, this book doesn't have them in alphabetical order. Tanit is actually uh, the goddess of pleasure. And her origins are uh, from, where her origin is from? She's from? I don't know. Tunisia. Tunisia, which is a country in Africa. Okay. And her goddess declaration, according to this book, is it feels good to feel good. Um, Actually, you know what? Let me just read you this whole thing really quickly. It says, you are thirsty for more pleasure. You can't thrive when life feels dry. You are made of laughter and stardust, not sawdust. Pleasure is your birthright. Listen to that, you guys. Pleasure is your birthright. You have a right to have fun, which was the whole point of my bringing this up, but I, you know, I went on this whole little path. I'll get there in a second. Pleasure is your birthright, a gift from the universe. So for many of us, we don't get taught to have fun. And this is why a lot of people don't have healthy fun as adults. The fun is centered around, uh, some. for some people, just sex. For some people, drugs and alcohol. I'm not judging you. I'm just saying there are many ways to have fun. Many ways to have fun. And we get taught sometimes, some people get taught work ethic. Even if we don't get taught work ethic, we definitely get taught a sense of adult responsibility. But we don't necessarily get the message to make room in our lives for fun, to make room in our lives for enjoyment. This is also a reason why uh, for some people there's an over-focus on uh, streaming for entertainment. Just sitting, that's so passive. And I sound judgy, but I watch the hell out of some TV. I watch a lot of TV, okay? Um, but that started as research for me with the work that I was doing. So um, I, too, have to remind myself to find other more active, more physical, more out of door ways to have fun. Reading can be one for you. Read for fun, not just read for work or read for self-empowerment or read for healing. That's where we were. Yes. So we were talking about... <laughs> We were talking about the fact that I feel that several of you have possibly been in the healing uh, energy for a long time now. Um, If you are still there or if you haven't been there yet and would like to go there, I want to recommend to you Celtic Fairy Tarot. She's got a channel here on YouTube. She is lovely and amazing. The uh, actual reader's name is Alyssa. I think she's great. I think she's so great. And... um, So anyway, being in that space, it brings up stuff. So you might feel beat up on right now, even though the intention and the point was healing and you may have had growth and you may be better, stronger, more courageous now than you were when you started. But it was a haul. It was work. And now it's time to remember how to have fun. Or for some of us to learn for the first time how to have fun. So Kadesh we've talked about, Tanit we've talked about, and then the third goddess that I'd like to bring to your attention is Bast or Baset. Uh, She is one of my favorites, one of my favorites. And again, uh, there are many things that she's patron of or patroness of, but one of them again is pleasure. Another one is boundaries. And I want to bring her up because for some of us, we might feel like doing things for the sake of pleasure is not a good idea or it's we're afraid of getting out of control. You can have pleasure with boundaries, creating, if you need to, um, definition around the fun you allow yourself to have, maybe the start for you. Okay, it may be for you that, you know, you don't just go out out and try something either because of interior inhibitions. Is that the word? No, that's not the word. It's actually the opposite of inhibitions. But something internal that holds you back. Yeah, inhibitions. I don't know if you know, tell me down there Nah, in the comments. Or it could be because of what you were taught and how you were taught and something keeps you from feeling like you have that right. Uh, So baby steps, you know, 
Say, I will allow myself to have this much fun on Tuesday. So now you've got a clear boundary. I will let myself have 15 minutes of fun on Tuesday. And then you don't have to worry about getting out of control. All right. So, so here with seven of stars, you know, she's tending to the garden that she's in. And, you know, seven ups in the traditional tarot pack is, is about, you know, assessing where we are. And I like to add to that in my interpretation of the card, well, it's assessing where we are as a result of the work we have done. And what I like to add to that is, and determining whether or not we feel that work has been worth it. Um, so here I'm getting to tell you to let yourself explore different things, particularly if you're someone who feels like you don't know what you would enjoy. Don't feel like you have to know. You don't have to know the answers. Try it. See how it feels. If you like it, keep doing it. If you like it, but you also want something else, add something else. If you like it, but sorry, if you do it, but you don't like it. Stop doing it and then find another thing. All right. Tend to yourself. Tend to your sense of fun, your sense of play. Did I finish telling you about Bast? And her? Yes, I did. Okay. And, um, and allow for yourself to look at what you're doing and how you're doing it. And make new choices, make changes if you feel the need to. So um, typically it's one tree that the person is looking at and assessing. But see here in this one, there's two. Okay. There's two. And the one that's big and then the one that's small. So don't feel like you have to do something all out to begin with. It doesn't have to be this to begin with. Start small. Start small and tend to you. Okay, let's see what else we have here. More insights for group two, please. Around the treat or self-care. That'll make them feel amazing right now. Strength. We have the strength card more insights and it's you know i'm getting for you here that it's it is going to take strength particularly if you don't have the habit of letting yourself be yourself it's going to be hard and it's going to feel foreign but you can do it and the payoff is going to be worth it you know like getting back to this original card that we started your reading with this um oracle card Remember to practice self-love. Do you see those mirrors in there? There's no reflection of anything in those mirrors. And when we are not allowing ourselves to be ourselves, that's what happens. There's like an emptiness. And people can feel it, whether they're aware of it or not. But most importantly, you can feel it when you're not represented. Okay? Let's see what else we have here for you guys. Anything else for group two? Anything else for group two? Oh, yes. All right. So we have the Ace of Crystals. And that's um, the Ace of Swords in a traditional tarot pack. And so again, I feel that for you guys, <clears throat> excuse me, this is around, what's the word? This is around openness to new ideas, new concepts of the self. Giving, giving voice to what's inside of you, definitely getting that. Allow yourself to explore and, and just let new ideas come your way around what it means to be you. Let new insights come to you, okay? If you, um, you know, do a, a, um, 
a crown chakra activation or a meditation to help open up your crown chakra. If you have a very closed idea of what it means to be you, if you have if you're closed minded about what it means to be you, then hmm, you know. No, you probably don't know because I didn't say words. So let me do, <laughs> let me say it better. Like I like to say, open your eye, open your mind, open your mind, open your mind, and let new ideas come in. That's what I'm getting for you here. And let those ideas come in without judgment. So swords is our thoughts suit. And sometimes when we are hyper intellectual or hyper uh, intelligent, there is a tendency towards judge judgment, judgment of self as well as judgment of others. And you might be one of those people who has the habit of judging yourself uh, because of having a brain that like works over time. Maybe you're very, very analytical. So let, let that ability to again assess, that ability to notice, to define, let it come up with new definitions. You know, let it branch out in what it means to be you and, and what you are allowed to be, do and have that is reflective of who you really are and what you would enjoy. Okay, that's what I've got for you today, group two. Uh, thank you for your, just being here. You know, I just, I love doing this. I love reading for you guys. It is such a pleasure and such an honor that you click on my video and that you stick around and that some of you like it, go ahead and like it now. And some of you, you know, comment on it. Again, go ahead and comment now. And that some of you even subscribe to my channel I'm waiting. Anyway, you guys, have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day or week, and I will see you in my next one. Bye. Hey, group three, welcome to your reading. I am, as always, so excited to have you here. Before I start your reading this afternoon, I want to tell you something. So I write blessings, um, and I have decided that I'd like to share that with you if it's something that you want. So let me see if I can say that better. There is a link in the description box of this video where if you click on it, it's gonna take you to a Google form. And if you fill out that Google form, you will receive from me a blessing, an originally written blessing that is designed as a beautiful JPEG or PNG that you can download and keep for yourself free of charge. It's, um, uh, you can use it for like your wallpaper on your computer or your phone, but just something to connect you to good vibes as you go through your day. I'm messing with my mouth because I feel like my, my lip gloss is doing something weird. Anyway, probably go back and watch this video and have like a piece hanging. Oh. <laughs> hey y'all, welcome to your reading. So I um, will be pulling some tarot cards for you, okay? Um, but before we do that, we of course need to reveal which oracle card it is that drew you into your reading. We know that you were, uh, some of you were drawn by this lovely rose quartz, this gigantic awards, rose quartz. I almost just call it a warts quartz. It's too lovely for that, right? So the deck that we're gonna be using this afternoon is the Dreamy Moons Tarot deck. It is not one that I use very often. So I feel compelled to tell you that um, I, I save it for special occasions. And I feel like today's reading is one of those such occasions because we're focusing on what is going to make you feel amazing. Yeah, when I do the readings here on YouTube, I rarely use this deck. When I read for people, uh, when I do personal readings, I occasionally use it, um, but not often. But it's here for you today. So why don't we get started? I've just, just you know. Anyway, uh, the card that drew you into your reading today is Do It For You. Do it for you. So the treat or self-care that is going to make you feel amazing is something that the first hit that I'm getting is for many of you, it's something that you've been feeling a need to justify doing. 
you haven't um, allowed yourself. I don't feel like this is a group that doesn't know what it is they would like to do. I feel like this is a group that the minute I said, oh, I didn't say the whole card. Let me say the whole card. Sundress, do it for you. The minute I said do it for you, you knew exactly what that was. And I feel that for some of you, it is go shopping. That's right. <laughs> um, retail therapy. Let's talk about it real quick. Now, I'm not trying to tell you to spend money that you don't have. Um, but sometimes we get so used to not buying things for ourselves because we have other obligations, whether it's our bills or it's other people that we have to take care of. Maybe we have just been conditioned to believe that we should not spoil ourselves, that we shouldn't um, care about our appearance, what we look like. You know, sometimes we can be guilty of having a piece or several pieces of clothing that have been in our closets for years, dare I say decades for some of us that, you know, have the ability to still, <laughs> it's not many of us that can do this. Uh, I know that I'm not, but um, if you happen to be one of those people that can still wear something that's 10 years old, kudos to you. And, uh, and so you don't, you don't buy for yourself. You don't shop for yourself. Now, so what I'm getting that will make you feel amazing is, yes, clearly, shopping, shopping, shopping. It can be clothes. It might be something else that you have an interest in that you would like to shop for, okay? It could be, um, if you love crystals, going on Etsy and finding some crystals for yourself. Um, if you need inspiration, possibly watching some of these vlogs that lifestyle uh, YouTubers do about hauls that they have or what they got for their birthday. And it's like the whole video is a ton of different clothes that they received or um, other like gifts, gadgets, trinkets, toys. But what I'm getting, the, the hit that I'm getting for you here with this card group three is that you have gotten out of the habit of allowing yourself to just browse. See, I'm getting that the energy here is not necessarily about spending. You don't have to spend. If you have the ability to and the desire to, if you find something that you're like, I have to have this or I really would like to have this, by all means, go ahead. But if that is not your reality, if you're not someone who has a discretionary income right now, because I know it's tight for a lot of us, um, at this time, some of us, it's tight all the time, um, that you're being encouraged to still allow yourself to look. You've gotten out of the habit of looking and looking is how we get inspired and looking is dreaming. And in looking and getting inspired, you feel a light. You feel, what's a better word than that? You feel the energy of can when you don't even let yourself window shop, when you don't even let yourself browse online, when you don't even let yourself watch, you know, uh, a lifestyle vloggers haul because of envy or jealousy or fear or lack mindset or scarcity or whatever the thing is. You, you, you keep yourself from full expansion because you're, you're stifling your energy. You're pushing down a desire that you have. And um, for some of you, it might be not just the browsing, but putting together like on an electronic vision board some things that you would like to buy for yourself and let them be things to hope for. See, the key here is allowing yourself to continue to feel hope. And um, for some of you, it might be doing Pinterest. Isn't that like essentially, I don't really use Pinterest, but from what I've heard, uh, from people who do uh, um, speak highly of it, like like uh, other content creators when they talk about it, it seems to me like it's kind of like a vision board or several vision boards. Like you put together collections of things that you like. And so you have the visual image of that to inspire you. We can sometimes get so in the habit of not treating ourselves 
that we forget to make space in our minds for it. And so if and when a situation occurs where we do get some extra money or even a a raise, so it's going to be long-term extra money or whatever, we don't remember to buy something nice for ourselves. Um, And here I'm getting, I'm definitely getting the sense around shopping overall, allowing yourself to shop. And it can be just window shopping and it can be just browsing. It does not have to be that you spend anything. Um, I'm also getting specifically to tell you it is very important that you don't go bargain shopping. Now, I might get some hate for this. I hope not, but I'm going to explain to you what it is, what, what's coming to me here around that. And again, it's, it's the idea around expansion, a letting your, sorry, allowing yourself, letting yourself to dream, allowing yourself to dream, letting yourself dream, okay? Imagine big things for yourself, possibilities. It's about allowing for possibilities because when you allow for possibilities in your heart, in your head, then when they present themselves, your, uh, I believe it's called the reticular activating system in your brain recognizes it and allows you to go towards it. You draw it to yourself. You manifest when you allow, but when you're in an energy of I can't or I shouldn't, you have a harder time manifesting for yourself those things that you want. And that can become scarcity or lack mindset because of the habit. And listen, whenever you hear me talk about scarcity or lack mindset, I'm not saying it out of judgment. And I am not by any stretch of the imagination trying to come off like I'm someone who always feels the abundance of life and life is great. And if you just believe hard enough, if you let yourself think positive, you'll have a better life. This girl said that to me once and I wanted to choke her. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I'm not going to say I should have. But my point is this. (laughs) You may have a life that doesn't allow you right now to have some of the things that you want. And some of us, some of us go through periods where we have a life that doesn't allow us to have some of the things that we actually need. But in our imaginations, we can have anything. There is no one stopping you from having it here. But you. Okay? Okay. So let yourself think on those things that you might want to get for yourself. If you can, if it's possible, when you get paid, attribute a small portion of every paycheck to a fun money account so that when you want to buy something, the money is there. Now, again, I know that this can feel like a hard thing because there have been times in my life where I just couldn't see a way where I could spend money for fun. But I feel like for many of us, we get this idea that money is just for paying bills, like it's a necessary evil. Um, But money is for buying things. That's what money's for. Money is for buying things. Some of those things are needs, but some of them should be wants as well. And when we, I found for me, that allowing myself to start a little fun money account and putting a, the, a very specific portion, very specific percentage of all income that I got, regardless of the source of the income, into that fun money account, um, believe it or not, it motivated me to make more money because my spending became about joy. My spending became about buying things that I wanted for myself and not just things that I needed and not just paying bills. Because when you're living a life where it's just about getting through, it's just about paying the bills, just about handing your money over to, you know, um, your, your debtors, uh, the electric company, your children, if you have them. And there's nothing left for you. It's harder to be motivated to earn. It's harder to be motivated to do those things that could possibly help you increase your earnings and give you more money so that you can spend more. So, um, you know, I want to give you a quick mantra. And that would be, I like spending money. Some of us constrict our energy when it comes to spending because of having had periods of time where there wasn't enough. We felt like there wasn't enough. And so, or maybe there literally wasn't enough. 
And so whenever we spend or have to spend or an expense comes up or, you know, it's time to register your car again. Oh, that one catches me every year. And we go into a locked energy, a constricted energy. And deep down inside our core belief, our core thought is I don't want to spend. This is going to get you out of that energy and go, I like spending money. I want to spend money. And if you can want to spend money, let me say that better. Of course, the caveat to it is that you want to spend money on pleasurable things for yourself. But you got to start telling your brain something different around money. Okay. And before we even get to that, unless again, you're one of those people that already has it. And if you got it like that, yo, kudos to you. But for those of us who we have to uh, wait before we spend, um, you're still being inspired to go ahead and shop, look around, make a list, put it in your cart. There are some retailers that if you put it in your cart and you leave the cart, they send you a coupon. So now you can get it for even less money. Etsy is one of those. Etsy allows those of us who have Etsy shops to set up a situation where if you leave something in your cart, you automatically get a coupon from us. And each uh, shop owner decides what the percentage of that is. So that's just a little hack, a little buying hack for you. So do it for you. Yes, you have obligations to others. Yes, you even have other needs-based obligations to yourself. But the thing that is going to make you feel amazing right now is shopping for you. Not shopping for the kids' clothes for um, the school year or shopping for the kids' Christmas presents only or um, you know, just buying those things that are needed and necessary for the home. But for right now... Start at the browse level. Start at the dream level. Watch those vloggers. Check out their hauls. Let them give you some ideas on fashion. If you're not one of those people that's great with fashion, I'm not. <laughs> I'm like all like sweats all the time, except for in the summertime where I'm shorts and camisoles. Um, I dress up when there's like an event. So I have two, two uh, what is it called? Two, um, not ranges, but... Uh, to extremes of clothes, super casual. Like I always look like I have on pajamas and fancy. I got nothing in between. All right, you guys. So let me pull a couple of cards for you just to give you a little bit more insight on what it is that would make you feel what treat or self care. And again, um, right now, the first hit that I've gotten for you with your Oracle card is the idea of looking, shopping, browsing, dreaming dream retail dreaming let's not call it retail therapy let's call it retail dreaming all right i have already i don't know why i just did that i pre-shuffle these cards before i start the camera um but i guess just to get me in the space of seeing what else comes up for you can we have more information around the treat or self-care that would make group three feel amazing right now okay so we have the nine of crystals in this deck mm-hmm sorry in this deck crystals is swords so this is the nine of swords card and if uh it's the equivalent of the nine of swords card in um a rider weight tarot deck or a, or a rider weight smith based tarot deck a traditional tarot deck and for those of you who know tarot or who watch a lot of tarot videos here on the tube, you know that Nine of Crystals is your worry card. It's your worry card. Worrying about money. There's a worry energy I'm getting. There's a worry energy around money for you. And that's not uncommon. So there's, again, zero judgment there. I think for the majority of us, our first instinct with money is to have worry attached to so when you think of money notice what kind of charge it has does thinking of money have a positive charge for you does it have a negative charge for you if it's a negative charge what's the quality of that charge is it negative to the um to the extent of like feeling traumatic to have to deal with money you know i had there was a period of time where i felt so much stress and pressure when i just went grocery shopping 
And this this happened for years, and it was because I, I traced it back to um, there was a, in my childhood there was a time where um, my my family went through a major life change where we literally lost everything because of a decision that my um, stepfather a series of decisions that my stepfather had made, and the negative repercussions to that were many. But one of the main ones was financial and that fell on my mother to have to deal with. And so this was happening around the time where I was first starting to learn how to be an adult. I was 12, between the ages of 12 and 13, mostly 12 that year and uh, or, or during that that time. And so my mother, who because of this scenario became a single parent it was very, very stressful for her. It was very, very stressful money. It was very stressful for her because she found herself a single mom of three girls and having to support all three of us, including her, so, and herself, so four of us by herself. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this was in a uh, 19, oh, I won't say what year it was, but, um, <laughs> but I learned how to view money through the lens that she was viewing it through at that time. My mother also worked in finance. She worked for a financial services company, which is now Bank of America. It wasn't at the time, but Bank of America bought it. And, um, but it was still, it was a major one. And so I learned from my mother because of what she was going through during that time in our lives to worry about money and not just worry, to, to be afraid of money. Money had a fear energy around, a trauma energy around it because it was tied to this major life event that, <clears throat> excuse me, that turned my family's life, <coughs> sorry you guys, completely upside down. And so that vibration stayed in me, even though I wasn't conscious of it. Subconsciously, I learned to be terrified about money. And I'm getting that for many of you who chose this pile, that is your that is your general charge around money is terror, worry, worry. Uh, you may have a habit of worrying about where it comes from. You may have a habit of worrying anytime you have to spend it. For some of you, you may have a uh, you might worry about whether or not you'll ever earn enough. Some of you may even be out of work right now. So you if that's your reality, you probably clicked off because you're like, this girl is talking about shopping. I ain't got no money. I mean, I get you. I hear you. <laughs> Been there. Um, so, yeah. We have nine of crystals. Let's see what else comes up. So, so be aware. Notice if you've got a, a negative charge around money whenever you think of it, even when you get money. Do you already in your mind think of it as gone because of all the expenses that you have and all the ways in which you know, the unfun ways, non-fun ways in which you know you have to pay for it? Uh, sorry, use it, use it to pay for things. Um, let's see what else we have here. So group three, more information around what would make them feel amazing right now. So we have six of wands. So yeah, we are seeing there's going to be, you're, you're going to have a change around this belief. You know, there's a lot of, I'm getting, there's a lot, a lot of support for you around making this internal shift, whatever it is that you believe in, whether it's, you know, God, goddesses, your spirit guides, your ancestors, whoever is on your team to help you through life, they really want you to shift this energy. Uh, for some of you, it's going to be that you they want you to be the one to shift this energy for your family. You may uh, look around and see, oh, shoot, everybody in my family's got this kind of charge around money, not just my immediate family, but like my aunts, uncles, cousins, grandma, grandpa. You know, it could be uh, a learned way of thinking about money because, you know, that story I just shared about my mother. She, Ah, you know, I almost said she didn't actively teach me to worry about money, that it was just through osmosis, but actually that wasn't true. <laughs> I had to think about that for a second. But as the years went on uh, with the stresses that she had, she then also started act 
actively teaching me to worry about money. And you may have had people in your family uh, that did the same. Your parents may have done that also. But you are uh, being encouraged to let the energy around that shift. That in I'm getting that you know do this thing that I talked about with the the uh, what do you call it uh, browsing. I'm oh I just got a serious hit that you are though I did speak on online browsing and checking out YouTube videos, go into the physical store. I'm getting that a big part of uh, facilitating this change for you is going to be in, you, you know, you have to feel that which you want to manifest. And a lot of times we talk about feeling it in the um, emotional or psychological space, which is 100% important. But another piece of it is feeling it physically. You have five senses, right? And so whenever I want to manifest something for myself, I tend to see how I can experience it before I have it with each of my five senses. And I'm getting that for you guys uh, to go and physically shop for things so you can get back in the habit of touching and dreaming and, and you're sending your body the message, which will then send it to your mind that you can have these things because in that moment though it is not yours to take home yet if you're just in the browsing stage and not the purchasing stage while it may not be yours to take home yet it is yours in that moment in terms of the experience of feeling it of touching it of smelling it of seeing it that's four of the five yeah yeah because don't taste it if it's closed don't taste it <laughs> Try stuff on. Let yourself try things on. If it's if the thing is not clothes for you, if it's uh, electronics, go into the Samsung store. Go into the Apple store. Don't just browse online. Engage more of your senses in the shopping experience, whether you actively buy and take home or not. Go to the freaking mall. Go to the mall. That's what I'm getting. Okay, uh, but yeah, you're, they're cheering you on, those those that are on your side. And I'm also kidding that you might be surprised at who in your actual real life, your IRL people, who, uh, who would actually cheer you on in this regard also. You might be surprised if you bring it up to if you are coupled up to your significant other or even to... Uh, I just got a negative hit on the mom thing. So maybe not so much your parents. But those other people who you feel are, um, who, who you feel responsible for, particularly a, a sense of financial obligation for, or two, two, two. Uh, I don't know which one that would be. With, if you're coupled up, it's a with, right? But if it's your children, you're responsible for them. Um, you would be surprised how excited they get for you at the idea of you doing this for yourself. Some may have said to you out loud, you need to do something about that wardrobe. Like if you got a teenager, he or she might have said that to you. Oh, what is that you're wearing? <laughs> um, or, <clears throat> or they may have just thought it. Your significant other might have just thought, you know, something around wanting for you that you do more things for yourself. They may have thought it, they may have said it, said it out loud. But I'm getting that, you know, those that are supporting you spiritually are definitely about this for you. They're for this for you. But I'm getting also that your, uh, your human team for many of you, it's not going to be the case for everybody, of course. Some of us live with uh, horrific people. But uh, but you might have a best friend. It may not be your significant other or your parent, but maybe a best friend that if you share this with them. I feel like this one wants to come, so we're going to take it. Um, that they, they cheer you on. They want this for you, too. They want you to have victory over your fears around money. Victory over your fears around money and allow yourself to do this for you okay and then we got four of stars 
If I had a mic, I... That is your financial security card. <clears throat> and it can also be read as your financial fears card. Let me explain. Four is security and structure in tarot. And depending on how it's illustrated in a tarot deck, the four of uh, pentacles, which this is. So in this particular deck, stars is the substitute for pentacles. So this is our four of pentacles card. So pentacles is earth energy, material, physical, um, necessity. And uh, four is structure, as I said a second ago, right? And again, depending on how it's drawn, you can look at it and clearly see this is a financial security card. And sometimes you can look at it and clearly see this is a, a financial insecurity card. I have one deck. I love this deck. It's the, um, I just lost it. Hold on. I think it's my, this might hurt. Yes, yes, yes. It's the This Might Hurt Tarot deck, right? Um, by Isabella Rockman. And um, in that deck, she's depicted the guy in the Four of Pentacles as, you know, there's a pentacle above him, one under each foot, just like normal, and he's holding one. So the same thing that we basically see here, right? Except with this one, the stars are on either side of this person instead of underneath the feet, but still at the bottom of the card. And in the Isabella Rotman deck, they are holding the depiction, the guy. He's, he's clutching it. He's well-dressed. He looks like he works on Wall Street, but he is clutching it. So he's got the money, but there's a fear of losing it. And then in other decks of mine, like, for instance, the Pulp Girls Tarot, which I also love, the depiction is not frightening. This woman is wearing, it's a woman, and she's wearing a um, fur coat. So again, it's got this like 80s Wall Street vibe to it because who wears fur nowadays? Like nobody. <laughs> and this is a relatively new deck, but it is an indication of wealth, right? It is an indication of luxury. So she is done up in her attire and her makeup and she looks good and she's, you know, and she's holding Again, she's holding the, the, the pentacle. She's holding the coin. And there are two at the bottom and one above her head. But with her, the energy is more a sense of financial security and having as opposed to insecurity and fear of loss. And with this particular de depiction in this particular deck, I feel that both senses or both interpretations of four of pentacles are applicable to you here that there is a feeling of financial insecurity but for you to know so for some of you guys oh i just got this for some of you ah oh, you may have already had life change in such a way that you do have enough this happened with my mother <clears throat> Because her earning, of course, eventually increased and significantly. But she still felt the fear of loss of money because we had had this very traumatic event where we lost everything. And um, so some of you, I'm getting that that's, that is there for you. This feeling of... <clears throat> you might be that person that when you get paid... You, you, you're you really good about sticking to a budget and you're really good about saving. And you have a certain percentage that you put away for savings all the time. And you have a certain percentage that you put away for even investments so you can grow your wealth. But you don't have that piece that I talked about earlier, which is the certain percentage uh, that you put away for having fun. So that when you see something, you can just buy it out of that account without thinking about how much it costs. So money is just about needs, whether they're today's needs or tomorrow's needs. And most financial uh, gurus on YouTube, and maybe some in real life too, I don't know, will caution you against spending for fun. They will say things like, and there is some truth to this, if you, uh, you're, you're, you're not spending your money when you spend indiscriminately, you're spending your future you's money, the money that belongs to future you. 
Okay, yeah, if you do it out of control. But if you predetermine a, a certain amount, a small amount, and you um, designate it just for that, making sure that you, and I'm not saying you have to have everything else covered before you can do that. I'm actually advocating for the opposite. So this is not, clearly not financial advice. It's enjoy your life advice. You'll feel better because you're giving yourself some things that you want, that you enjoy, that bring you pleasure. I talked about these three goddesses in group two's reading. I did not bring it up in group one, but they're applicable to, to this entire video today. And they are Kadesh, also known as Katesh, depending on you know where you're looking. She's spelled differently. She's the goddess of sexual pleasure. I always start with her, which is weird. <laughs> or is it? Anyway, and um, the second is Tanit, who is the goddess of pleasure, not necessarily sexual pleasure. And then there's Bast, who is the goddess of fun and joy and pleasure, as well as the patron of cats. And uh, she's the goddess of many, many things, including boundaries. Uh, and these three goddesses, I just got introduced to them last year. And I love that I know of them now because so much of my teaching around money was, again, like I said earlier, fear-based. And then also about just using it for needs whether they're today's needs or the future, needs for the future. But something clicked in me last year where I started for myself this little fun money account. And then I started using it. And I started enjoying the idea of money more. See, there are goddesses and gods of pleasure for a reason because pleasure is required for you to enjoy your life. And enjoying your life makes it easier to actually get through your life. So I got real preachy there. I thought I started off fun, but I think it's because I want so much. I want this so much for you. I want so much for you this feeling of I can have. If you have seen other people in your life get things or be able to do things, or have things or you know but you have not this is a itty bitty way that you can start shifting the energy there start with just looking just looking allow yourself to do it for you and then from there start letting yourself buy yourself little treats shoot there's this gum called Big Bowl from my childhood. It's like, you know, you can't buy it in stores. But there used to be like the neighborhood. The at my my cousins are from a small town in South Carolina, and there was the candy lady. This you know the lady in the neighborhood who sells candy out of her house, which would be questionable nowadays. But anyway, and we would go there to get this gum. And now you can't find it in a store anywhere. But you know where you can find it is Amazon. And one of the treats that I not too long ago got for myself was a big old 48 count bag of that gum. <laughs> and it brought me so much joy to have it. Uh, one, because I like the way it tastes. And two, because it brought me back to a time that was so carefree and so full of love and joy in my life. So... What I'm getting for you guys and counseling you towards, and I hope that, I hope this resonates for you. I usually don't like to use that word, but I do hope this resonates for you. I hope it inspires you to start shifting the energy around two things. One, money and the spending of it. And two, what you are allowed to have and what you are allowed to do. Oh, and the other piece that came up with this that I forgot to mention is kind of important is that let yourself feel financially secure, okay? Because even if that financial security hasn't come yet, it is coming. Uh, this is predictive. This part of the reading is predictive for you. Financial security is yours. So I, I, I forgot to go there for a second because I talked about those of you who already have the money but act like you don't. You know who you are. You do. So let yourself enjoy some of it. If you let yourself enjoy it, you'll be more inclined to earn more. Trust me. Trust this lady on YouTube that you've never met before in real life. Um, 
<laughs> no, seriously, this is what happened for me. I got more inspired to earn when I started seeing that money could be used for fun and wasn't just, ugh, I gotta earn a living so I can pay these bills. All right, group three, that's what I've got for you today. Start your shopping. That is gonna make you feel amazing. Just little kids, little kids. They do a Christmas list every year and they and that's the other piece of this. When you do your shopping, do it without barrier. And I'm talking about the browsing part. I'm not talking about, again, going into debt, trying to buy things you can't afford. I'm talking about the dreaming half of this. Let yourself do it without boundaries. Let yourself dream. Let yourself put it together in the cart online or, you know, look at it and, and put it all on your arm at the store, you know, or in your cart or whatever the thing is. And don't worry about what message it's sending to the cashier or the, the shop girl. I don't know what we call them, the retail person. I don't know what you call them. But, um, you know, because sometimes we don't let ourselves touch or we don't let ourselves grab the thing or start the dressing room or try it on because we don't want to send them the wrong message that we're going to buy things that we're not going to buy. Fuck them. Yeah, I said it. You don't need to worry about that. You need to let yourself dream. Okay, they're going to get the same $15 an hour, whether you buy or not. Most of these stores, these girls don't work on commission. So you are not affecting their life by not trying things on or sorry, you're not affecting their life by trying things on and not buying. They're going to get their same pay rate no matter what. So let yourself have the experience. Let yourself, let yourself, let yourself is your message. Group three, do it for you. Don't put their needs and their comfort above yours. Let yourself dream. This was a long one. I wonder if y'all are going to stick for the whole thing. But even if you don't, I will see you in my next one.